Hey guys, it's Steven from MyPLCTraining.com and coming with another video to help you become a confident PLC programmer. And I think this one's going to be uh, a really good discussion topic because uh, there's a lot of buzz going on about artificial intelligence and AI replacing jobs, um, white collar jobs, even programming jobs. And my, my company's in the business of making confident PLC programmers, so teaching people controls and automation skills to advance their careers into controls and automation. So naturally, um, some people have the concern, well, um, is AI going to take that job away? Um, so here's one customer that reached out. He said, hope you're doing well, man. So sorry for my absence with the training. I've had about a week off in the last four months. Work has been nonstop. Regarding my training, I have a serious question to ask you about AI. Since it's evolving so rapidly, do you think we'll get to a point relatively soon where we humans won't be needed to write or troubleshoot PLC programs? Will AI eventually be able to create a PLC program in an instant and in any format from just telling it what we want? And also add and take away ladders and instructions if flaws or corrections are found? I'm just wondering if I'm on the correct path with this, and I'm genuine, genuinely curious about your opinion on staying relevant in the field of engineering when this is when this really becomes a reality, uh, because it's coming and many jobs will be lost over this. All right, I've got flies flying around me, so if you see me doing this, I'm swatting them away. Um, so this is a great question and uh, something that's worth digging into a little bit. So um, if you are not playing with AI and testing things like chat GPT and so on, you're missing out and you should start doing that right away. Let me just say that from the beginning, um, because we are in a very unique time in history where we're going to have capabilities that we didn't ever have before. And the ability to, for one person to have access to knowledge and uh, the ability to create things and develop things a lot faster than in the past. So that means there will be jobs lost. Um, now, uh, so let me just say this. The jobs that will be lost are the ones that don't, that are monotonous for the most part. Things that don't take a lot of um, effort and brain power. Now, there are some things that do take brain power and effort that may be, that will change for sure. Um, you know, doing research, for example, or troubleshooting PLCs, programming PLCs, it will change, no doubt about it. Um, but the thing about AI is you have to have somebody that knows how to train the AI you have to have somebody that knows how to prompt the AI. Um, and so the, the PLC programming tools will definitely be coming um, to make the process of, of creating PLC programs a lot easier. Now, um, how soon is that coming? How much is it going to change things soon? I don't think it's going to change that much very soon, honestly in industrial automation. Um, there's too many existing systems that require knowledge for controls and automation engineers to be able to troubleshoot and add on it to and so on. Um, there is um, too many complexities to different equipment and combining and, you know, connecting different machines together for to to make a certain process, whatever is going on, whether it's in manufacturing, wastewater, water treatment, etc. Um, so AI is going to, we're going to have to train AI how to deal with those things and how to be helpful. Um, but it's not going to be replacing controls and automation engineers. Their job is just going to be different. And what it is going to do, though, is allow us to do more. Okay, so um, that's the potential I see is that just like, you know, automobiles and things changed the world and replaced the need for horses and that type of thing and, and some manual labor as well. Um, but it did allow us to do a lot more. And so things started accelerating more quickly. So it's not that um, it's going to replace a bunch of people. It's more like 
Because it's not like control. There's just staff, like endless, you know, rows of controls engineers who are doing monotonous tasks. It's just not happening. Um, controls engineering, automation engineering is very specific, very customized, lots of problem solving. So it's going to allow those people to do more. And so we are going to see um, an improvement in manufacturing. We're going to see the ability to create more, the ability to to find problems more quickly, et cetera, and be more efficient. So that's what I see. Now, let me go to the next part of this, and I just want to show you some examples of what you can do currently with chat GPT for PLC program. So let's say I want to program a PLC to start a pump when I push a start button. And then 30 seconds later, start another pump and hold it on for um, 20 seconds. The first pump should only turn off after a stop push button is pressed. Okay, so first of all, understanding the machine, the process, somebody still has to know that to prompt AI what to create in the first place. So now it is going to make it a little lower threshold to accomplish what you're what you're wanting to do here. But this is a pretty simple situation, pretty simple program. And last time I tested this, it was really good, really close, but there was an issue with it. Um, so this is really good. It says pump one starts when start PB is pressed and stays on till stop PB is pressed. Um, so here's our, our logic here. This is interesting. So I don't know what this, this looks kind of funky. Uh, last time I did this, it actually did a, did a better job. So that's another issue is getting consistent outputs is we're just not quite there. But um, so I don't know what this latch is. I mean, it should be pump one latch. Maybe this is supposed to be over here. That's probably what it is. Um, but the fact that it's a latching output and we're latching it in with this is interesting to me. Um, Okay, so latch, and then we start this 30-second timer. And then after the 30-second timer is done, we start the 20-second timer. And while the 20-second timer is timing, dot TT, then we turn on the pump 2 output. Okay, um, so that's pretty good. And what you can actually do here is say, give me a um, file that I can import into Studio 5000. And let's see what it gives us. Okay, so here we go. Um, you can see download pump control.l5x, and then you can actually import that into your Studio 5000, which is really cool. So if we were to bring up Studio 5000, um, I've got another project here open, but if we open and we, yeah, we go to L5K and we do this one. Okay, so it doesn't have a controller export, so we would actually need to import it into an existing project. So let's see if we can import, import component. And we'll just say this is a routine. I'm not sure if it's a routine or not. Maybe it's a program. Let's try importing a program. Whoops, that's equipment phase. L5X. Okay, so that that didn't even work. It, it wants an, um, a routine to import a routine. It says that's what it's supposed to be. I add it and it doesn't work. So if we if we tweaked it a little bit, we might be able to get it to output the correct um, routine. 
But um, even knowing how to do this type of thing, this is an example. It's like when you introduce a new tool, um, it can really accelerate the process of development. But now you have new problems that you have to solve. So maybe they're smaller problems, maybe they're easier problems, but there's always going to be new problems to solve um, in whatever field that's using AI. There's no field that's going to be totally replaced by AI. It's going to it's going to transform it, right? Um, there there may be a couple exceptions, but um, most fields will just be changed, not totally eliminated. All right. So another thing you could try to do is actually upload a screenshot of logic. And I've tried this. We'll see how it does. So without prompting it at all, I'm just going to open this screenshot of some ladder logic that I created. And um, so it uploaded this, and it's, it's analyzing it. Triggers output exactly at 6 p.m. on the second or 20th day of the month by checking for day equals 2 or 20. Rungs 2 to 3, set Gen 1 start relay and Gen 2 start relay when Gen 1 starter and Gen 2 starter are energized. So let's acknowledge this is pretty, pretty impressive, right? It's analyzing the screenshot. It knows um, that it's ladder logic. Um, it knows, it, last time I did this, it knew it was Studio 5000, even though there's no Studio 5000 icon here. Um, and it's analyzing the logic. It knows, you know, how these timers work. It knows what a GSV is. So it's pretty cool. And it analyzes it for you. So again, this is powerful, um, to, for this thing to understand. But if you don't, know how it works um and you're a hundred percent reliant on the ai you know that's not that's not a good thing so you there's going to be people that need to understand how to use the tools and know how they can verify that the ai is right so think of it like this it's going to be a tool that makes your job easier and quicker but you still have to know how to use the tool and you still have to know what the outcomes you're looking for are. Okay, so that's my quick little um, explanation of how I think AI is going to impact industrial controls and automation. Would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think AI is going to replace controls and automation engineers? Or do you think it's just going to be a tool that we're going to have to learn how to use and incorporate and it's going to change things but not replace um, replace the importance of this field. So would love to hear your comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.